We've not been to the suite for maths before. We normally we do maths, maths in classroom, okay? But we're up here today because we're going to do some special work, okay? Something that we can't actually do in the classroom because everybody can't have a computer to work on. So we're going to work Simon Mills is about to demonstrate an example of how invaluable ICT can be in teaching aspects of numeracy. He's using the school's ICT suite to teach a key stage two unit about data handling. First, they'll make frequency tables, then next week, use the tables to make bar charts. In the final lesson, they'll label their charts. Put your hand up if you've ever seen, or you can tell me what a graph is or a chart is. A graph is um, some, uh, something with squares and has columns and rows. It's a picture of something with columns and that kind of thing. The kind of charts and graphs that we're going to look at are going to be about how many more or how many of. And there's a special word for that, and the special word is frequency, okay? And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be thinking about that word, frequency. How often things <coughs> happen, how many there are, yeah? Okay? Or how many times can something happen in a space of time? Simon begins with an exercise to get the children thinking about the idea of frequency. How many times can they write their first name in one minute? And are we ready? Go! What's the matter, Leah? Mine doesn't work. OK, well, this will just add to the bonus of the discussion we're going to have afterwards. Here we go. Here you go. What about that one? Three, two, one, stop. OK. Right. Do you want to go through now and count up how many times did you manage to write your name in one minute? And then write down at the bottom the number of times that you managed to write your name. Sam. How many times did you manage to write your name in a minute? 22. Shouldn't have such a long name. Sophie, how many times did you manage to write? How many? 16. He uses a remote keyboard to put the data into a frequency chart on the whiteboard and then divides the class into small groups. He wants to get them talking and thinking the language of data handling. I'll tell you what, have talking twos for just a little while and I want you to have a look at the numbers and the names and I want you to think about whether there might be a pattern or a reason behind why some people were able to write their names more than other people were. That's a good one, that's a really, really good idea. After 20 minutes, he's ready to move on to the main part of the first lesson. Working on the computers in pairs, the children are going to do an investigation. They're going to find out how many different coloured sweets there are in one tube and then record their results in a frequency table. If you start eating these sweets, is your test going to be fair? No. no, because there won't be the same number that you started with or how many they put in here. So it won't be fair. So we try to keep it fair. We're keeping it fair by keeping our fingers and the beans away from our... Thank you. I think the challenge in mathematics generally is the language. I think what's really important is for children to be able to talk about and use the language because I don't think children are actually able to understand fully what the terms mean until they've had a chance to use it in conversation and to come to some kind of agreement themselves about what it means. ICT, I see as a tool, it's a mediating tool. And it's also something that allows the children to, to see results quickly. It allows you to, to, to do things that you probably wouldn't get done normally. And one of the things you know, that, that, that young children particularly find difficult with data handling is creating the charts themselves. The computer produces those for them, so straight away they're able to access the maths and they're not worried about presentation. Okay, well, let's have you on the, carpet the children have used the ICT suite before, but this is the first time they've come across this piece of software. Zero. Quickly before we go, put your hand up if you had exactly the same frequency of sweets 
inside your tubes? Nobody. Uh, it'd be impossible if you want it to be equal. It'd be impossible to have them all equal. Why do you think that? Um, because you can't just <coughs> get um, like five reds and five blues. So you think from the data we've got already, you think it's impossible? Yeah. So this week we've looked at frequency. Next week we'll have a look at some charts that we use to present frequency. And then after that, we'll have a look at what Adam's just raised. This thing that he thinks it would be impossible for us to ever get an equal share, if we can get that far. Right. Can you stand up quietly? The community are great. You know, it's an inner city school. Um, look around the outside of it, you probably wouldn't think so. The kids are great, but the children by and large are really, really eager to learn and they're really eager to get on. Um, you know, I wouldn't have been here as long as I had if I didn't like it, so you know, it, 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 it's great. But it is a challenging place to work. This is what you're going to do for me today. You're going to work with your partners and you're going to create bar charts from your frequency tables. Can you think of any other things that might help us? If I was, the, if I was reading your chart, is there anything else that might make it easier for me to read? The colours, how many there are. The colours and how many there are. OK, is there anything I could do to these? Do you think I can change the colours? Yeah. I don't know how you um, change the colour of just one. I'll see what happens when you press now. So it needs two clicks. It needs one to select the columns all together, and then it needs one more to collect the column that you want to change. Do you think in a minute or two, if I stop everyone, you'll be able to show them how to do this? Right, OK, I'll leave you to it then. We'll come back and have a look. Big look. Right, what, have you still not found your chart? Right, hang on a minute. Clap once if you can hear me. Twice, three times. There's lots of us at different stages here. Can you put your hands in your lap so I can see that you're all listening? Can you put your hand up if you don't have Excel open yet? Mm-hmm. OK, let me come and get you sorted then. This group over here, Abril, they've got a chart started. Well done. And this group looks like they're nearly there. OK, right, off you go. I'll come and find it for you in a minute. Lucy, can you come and help me? OK. What do you do with that? Yeah. Um, can you actually change the colours? Or oh, you like? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And I could just play buttons. Um, I think you have to, um, you can tip this bit as well, on the border. So anyway, you can do it like that if you want. Why oh, do you do that? I don't know. Oh, Sophie? 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 Can you tell her how to do that border? Oh, no, no, I don't know how you do that bit. One thing what I would do is first yeah, bring it out. Yeah, definitely. The background. Just put it out first. Just put it out. 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 Just one of the nice things about using IT tools is everything happens so quickly once you get started. There were one or two people there today I was a bit worried about. We took a long time to find our files, thanks. And then when we found them, I thought, oh, they're never going to get anywhere. But most people have at least managed to get a chart created today. What did turn out to be really chaotic in the end was I made you know, the error of believing that because all, half the class knew how to get from um, Excel to um, the, the, the directory that their file was in, that they all knew, and in actual fact they didn't. Finding their way around the network has been one of the priorities for my ICT work. To forget the ICT, I think the maths, there was loads of it going on. I think the discussions that were going on were great. I was really impressed with that little group over there who decided to do some peer tutoring as well. Children will go off and they will share what they know and they're quite happy to show each other what they know. Um, and, and that was really, really nice to see because I have to say this time around, I really didn't expect it.
What I did the other day when we'd finished was I sneaked up here, got all of your data out of all of your files and made one big one. Do you know how many suites you counted as a class this week? 1,176 suites. So that's a fairly big sample, isn't it? This is a big boy's graph or a big girl's graph. It's just an enormous graph. That's all there is to it. What I'm going to ask you to do this morning is this. I'm going to ask you to go back. You might have to make your charts again, but that's not a big problem, is it? Because it's quite quick. And as you go through today, I want you to give your chart a really good title, the best title you can. So whoever picks up your chart is going to be able to look at the title and go, oh, so that's what they've been talking about this week. And then down the side of your charts, or along the axes, I want you to give your axes some labels. I think that basically we've covered everything that I wanted to cover. And, the, and, and what I was really excited to see was them using the language. And the language, I think, has all been about the graphs and charts. There's been one or two moments, well, some fairly sticky moments, actually, where the technology has keeled over and let them down, or they've not remembered how the technology has worked. But by and large, I think the focus of the talk has very much been about the charts and the graphs and what they say. Year four, can you clap your hands once if you can hear me, please? Twice. Three times. Hands on laps. Right, we actually were quite late, so if you wouldn't mind, would you mind giving me five or ten minutes more before you go off to lunch? Let's just have a look at some of the files that you've been working on this morning. What's the first problem with this chart? Not labelled. There's no labels, so we've got no idea what these axes are all about. In fact, what's really tricky on this one is we haven't got, even got a sign of the, the colours. So we haven't even got a clue that we're talking about the, the colours of the suites. OK. So what do we think of this chart, then? It is colourful, so we're pulled in and we're drawn into the chart. What about the maths? I think that ICT is an incredibly dynamic tool. I think it's a real tool. It's something that in the real world the children will use. So I think that they've had a chance to see real charts, real graphs being created in a real situation using a real tool from the outside world. And I think that if you take this session, which has taken three hours, and translate it into a traditional classroom setting, I, I honestly don't feel that you would have gotten through the amount of content and discussion that I managed to get through today. Right, this one could have been made a little better, and I think that Lucy would have done it if she'd had the time. What would you have done to the bars? Make them in the right colours to go with this. Year four, you've done really, really well. We're going to come back and look at these again later on in the year, OK? When we come back to look at some different types of charts. So you can give yourselves a pat on the back. Well done. And if you're sitting up really straight and quiet, you might even be able to go for lunch.